Right then, thank you for doing this interview once again, Ovid. Hope you find <laughs> Yeah, it's no, it's fun. It's great. It's uh, good to have a rehearsal. To yeah, test, yeah. test it too. Well, let's, at least we're using Zoom. This is the first time I've used Zoom in a meet, in a interview, so I'm getting used to Zoom for a change because Skype seems to be very bad for recordings. Yeah, and uh, and I um I think that both the uh, uh, audio and uh, video quality is better on Zoom. Yeah. This, is, this is my, uh, I have, have used, used it just a few times, uh, Zoom, but it seemed to be a better and more stable uh, platform. Yes, how your weekend been? Oh, fantastic. Uh, it's been uh, so much sun and, uh, well, it's been some drinks and uh, having fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, same here, actually. Well, thank you for doing this interview. We're talking to Ovid from the band, um, Terra Odin. Sir, thank you for doing this interview. Oh, this is uh, <laughs> no problem. It's yeah, all fun. I've been listening to your album every day since we last spoke, and it's it's just a fantastic album. It really is. Oh, wow. Thank you. I think, personally, and I'm not going to bullshit you, but I think that your vocals on this album is the best thing you've done. Thank you. And and I I think it is. Uh, I, I hope so. Uh, it's different from, well, May, for me, it's different from anything else I've done, but and I think uh, I finally had a time to to do it properly. I think yeah. I just think that your vocals are more accessible to that from like, Spiral Architect because I think the music was more involved and more intense. But this uh, this music's a little bit more relaxing. People can listen yeah to it and enjoy it more. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that was um, it's for where I intend to have a more accessible music this time, uh, since it's not Spiral Architect nor Manitou, but kind of a mix. So uh, focusing on uh, more riff, uh, more more uh, groove and, and, uh, and vocals that uh, have nice melodies. Yeah, focusing on them, focusing on the songs and melodies. That's that's what we've been definitely doing. You've definitely going in the wrong, right direction this time. Thank you. Keep going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> more questions then, Ovid. First of all, as a as a singer, who who inspired you to become a singer? Which singers made you want to be a singer? Uh, the first one who inspired me was well. It started out with Elvis or Demis Rousseau, but uh, but uh, the one who got me into singing, wanted me, making me want to be a, a singer was actually uh, Vince Neil of, of uh, Motley Crue. Uh, because of the whole rock star thing with Motley Crue, their, their image, uh, their behavior, their attitude, and I loved the music and singing and, and that just wanted, I just wanted to be, uh, uh, to also be able to do that kind of stuff. And, was you a lipstick spandex boy then back in the day? No, never a spandex boy. <laughs> I, was, I was jeans and, and leather jackets, but but never spandex. What um, did you think of Motley Crue? What was your favorite album? For me, it was Shout of the Devil. Yeah, uh, Shout of the Devil, but all, but all, but well, all the well, first it was Shout of the Devil. Then I heard, uh, then I heard. Um, too, uh, too Fast for Love, yeah. and I loved that one. And then uh, Theater of Pain came out, and and it was that meant it was uh, you know it was um, in the right age for me when you just suck up everything and and everything is special for you. And uh, Theater of Pain, many says that that is one of the worst album, but but for me it meant meant a lot in in that age I, I was. Yeah. So uh, I mean, uh, there's some great songs there too, and and then girls, girls, girls came out, and I love that one. But after that, I fell off. But but uh, shout of the devil is by far my my favorite. Yeah, me too. It's kind Danger. of danger. <laughs> the other glam image, but the, the music on that album also appealed to the thr a bit of thrash. I guess I guess you could say thrash fans could like it. Yeah, way. because they they made, well there was so much because it was uh, double bass drums it was uh, screaming guitars it was pentagrams and it was uh i mean uh it was flame it was everything it was uh everything was cool 
with Master Crew at, uh, at that uh, that era. So did you play any instruments before you became a vocalist? Or was vocals the first? I I started playing. Well, well, actually, I started playing. Uh, um, wow, what's that called in English? The accordion. Yeah. Okay. I started playing accordion, but I, I couldn't manage to do one thing with one hand and one but another thing with another hand. So, so I traded into a microphone and I, I started singing. But I also play started playing guitar at the same age. I, I started singing. Do you still play guitar? Oh yeah, and I play guitar. Uh, Bully and I shared the solos on on the Terra Audium album. Oh, right. brilliant! So, so you're a pretty good guitar player then. Well, I, um, I think it fits the songs. Uh, I've been rehearsing. I mean, uh, I've been rehearsing eight hours a day some uh, for years. So I, I hope it's up to the standards. Brilliant. Awesome. So what other singers inspire you besides Vince Neil, metal singers, rock singers? Oh, rock singers. Well, it's, it wasn't uh, far after I was inspired to sing by, by Vince Neil that I got into more like uh, Dio, Ronnie James Dio, um, Robert Halford, and then uh, then I heard Halloween and Kai Hansen. Uh, I actually introduced myself to Kai Hansen once, and I called myself Hell Eivin. My name is Eivin, but he didn't get it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and uh, and I uh, and then was. Um, Michael Kiske, Michael Kiske, and, uh, and later on Midnight and uh, Jeff Tate and J John Arch of Fate's Warning. There's so many, all the good ones <laughs> inspired me. Fate's Warning, John Arch, area. Which is your favorite Fate's Warning album? Oh, Awaken the Guardian. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Awaken the Guardian, but also Spectre Within is is fantastic. I think. Yeah, I think Spectre was in the very first album I ever bought, and that's that's. For me, that's my favorite. But yeah, I know ah. you, mm. the Guardian is a great album too. Yeah, yeah, Awaken was the first first album I I got. So, what? so that's uh, I I listen to it uh, every day for two years. And so, so what about what about uh, Crimson Glory? Do you have a favorite of the three? Well, it's not the third. Uh, it's the two first. Yeah, <laughs> and I love both of them. I think they're both so special. I think they're. They're the same, but they're so different. So it's hard to, to really. But I think maybe um, Transcendence is 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 my favorite there. Yeah, I got to see Fate um, Crimson Glory on that too. I got managed to actually interview him backstage. Oh, cool! And so I, I tried taking photos with the band backstage about the masks, and they said no, no, no photos. Nah. <laughs> it was a shame, but it was a great concert just to witness. Midnight screaming his vocals like he did. Oh, back in the day, yeah, I would love to see that. Did you ever see Fate's Warning with John Arch? Because I never did. No, uh, no, I never, never saw them. I've seen Fate's Warning live, uh, but it was with uh, uh, Ray. Ray Alda, yeah. Yeah, yeah, me too. What about Dale? And that was fantastic. It was uh, right after. I think it was, uh, it would, they were supporting Dream Theater. Wow, that would have been pretty good. Because I know in the States they supported Dream Theater, and I think there was um, Queensryche on the bill as well in the US. I think the three oh. were together, which should have brought to UK and Europe, but they never did. So what about Judas Priest? What, do you have a favorite Judas Priest album? Yeah, I, I, well, I have I have two. Very different, but, but um, Defenders of the Faith is... What I think is maybe the best Judas Priest album, but uh, um, oh, uh, Wick, uh, no, uh, what is it? Forgot the name now. The the angel with wings. Oh, sad, but, sad wings of destiny. Sad wings of destiny. I think that is. I mean, that is where uh, with with the Ripper and um, and uh, victim of changes and and. Um, the really long song, standing by the window. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dream Deceiver. Yeah, Dream Deceiver, and you can hear, uh, you can hear where Jeff Tate has 
how inspired Jeff Tate is by Rob Halford on a few of them. I really, it's, think, it's, uh, I really think that Judas Priest should play during this Eve Alive, especially on the 50th anniversary. That would, wow, that would be fantastic. Awesome. But uh, the the vocals, the screams are I- inhuman. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's one of my um, it's my absolute favorite song by Judas Priest. Yes, uh, Dream Deceiver. I think my favorite Judas Priest album has to be Screaming for Vengeance. Ah, oh, yeah. And my favorite song is Bloodstone. On Bloodstone. <laughs> yeah, I love that album. I was, uh, I think I was 16 at the time or, or 15 or something like that. And I, I, I love, the, love that album too. Yeah, so later on, what other singers inspired you? What, what modern metal singers inspired you later on? Not, not too later, but later, like the 90s. Oh. In the nineties, nineties, I am. Um, uh, well, that's a that's a hard question. <laughs> well, I've been only thinking about the ones who inspired uh, inspired me back back when I was uh, younger. I, I I can't remember that many bands back then. What about what uh, about progressive singers? And you like because obviously all the bands you've been in have all been progressive. What progressive singers besides John Arch and Ray Alder inspired? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, and and of course, uh, uh Buddy Lackey of, of Psychotic Waltz. Oh, yeah, Seven Graves, yeah, absolutely. That that was uh, well, I actually, I never, I never heard Psychotic Waltz b- before I joined uh, uh, Spall Architect, and they they were all fans of of uh, Buddy Lackey and Psychotic Waltz, so I I tried to to do a little bit to do to change my well when i started in in um spoil architect i was more into like uh of course john john arch but also uh kiske and uh, and the, the halloween type of vocals so so they they didn't want that uh so i was trying to 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 find myself in a be more original and uh, and create my own style by b- mixing John Arch with Buddy Lackey and, and Kiske and trying out stuff on uh, so so uh, so uh, Buddy Lackey uh, had a had an impact on me back back then. You could definitely hear that in the music you play now and in Spiral Actor. You've definitely got Buddy's voice in there. Without a doubt. Oh, uh, good. Well, that's an honor. <laughs> yeah, he's a great singer. Unique. I like the way he plays the flute as well as things is not many bands can do that no i i wanted to do i wanted to do uh something like that back in spiral architect so uh, we, we discussed me uh playing uh a digital saxophone <laughs> to to uh, to do all the stuff on on a digital saxophone but uh, i never never got there <laughs> wow so your first band was actually manitou was it was that the very first band you was in no, I, I was in a, a band before that called Harlequin. Uh, Harlequin. Um, we were uh, childhood childhood buddies, uh, and I, and I was singing. Um, we were out on a discotheque, or not a discotheque, but but the, the local, uh, not, not a nightclub, but 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 for for youth, for for teenagers. And uh, I had my heavy metal friends, and and I st- always sang some um, Motley Crue and s- stuff like that. And they say, "Hey, you should sing in our band." And uh, oh well, I can't. Well, I really want to be a, a rock star, and but I can't. I don't know how to sing in a band. And well, just try out. And I met up up with the guys, and we uh, they started playing uh, "Heaven and Hell" by uh, Black Sabbath, and I sang that song and. That went well, so we went over to more, dif- more. Uh, well, we played "Victim of Changes" by Judas Priest back uh, then. So it was a hard song to cover, especially vocally. Yeah, but uh, it, it's that was when I found out that I had uh, more register than I maybe I thought I had. So I don't know how that sounded back in the day, but. <laughs> <laughs> but uh 
Uh, it was uh, one of my favorite songs to do back then. Did you actually record anything with Harlequin? Is it Harlequin was the band? Mm. <clears throat> no, no. Well, we had a bunch of demos, but they were recorded on a tape recorder, and I have the I have the tape tapes somewhere, but uh, they're not digitalized, so um, and I don't know where where they are. <laughs> But they're somewhere in in this house. <laughs> you can find them on YouTube if anybody like myself wants to listen to them. Would there be anything on there? I, I don't think there is anything on YouTube by uh, the Harlequin. No. Right then. So after Harlequin, you joined Manitou, which is for people that don't know this band here, this great album. Ah, oh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> fantastic. Yes. Uh, well, actually, I, I saw um, I saw Manitou live. A few times before I joined, it was a drummer pair who was singing back then, and they had a synth, synth, synth uh, keyboard player, and they were the best live band I've ever seen back then. And all my friends were very impressed by them because they they were really, really attitude, uh, and they were they were playing heavy metal, but also more. But behaving like trash metal bands, but but they were playing heavy metal. There was so much much attitude, and they always, and the keyboard player was headbanging like hell, and and they always, uh, on every show I saw, they they um, ended the show with. Uh, and double bass drums and everything and I, back then and they were they were like 16 7 no i think they were 14 15 back in that back then so when i joined i joined us 17 and I, I think they were 15 and and 16 back then so this album entrance was when was roughly when you were like 16 and 17 years old it was recorded uh some of the songs are are, are, are no it was I think we were 17, 18. Well, I was, and and when we wrote these songs, uh, and uh, and uh, some of the drummer uh, pair, he was maybe 16 when we wrote this stuff. Yeah, because it's it's very Fate's Warning sounding in Queensrÿche, Kelly Queensrÿche that album. Do you agree? <laughs> Yeah, th uh, yeah, we were very, very inspired by them. I, uh, they have never, never heard uh, Fate's Warning. So when I came uh, came uh, into the band, I brought in uh, Wake in the Garden. Everybody was just, "What the fuck is this? This is the best thing I ever heard." And and then uh, then uh, later, uh, No Exit came out, and 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 we heard that, and wow, they changed the style so much, and and then. Uh, a few, few years later, a perfect symmetry came out, and we were inspired by that too. So, and, so and uh, it's, it's a no exit album. This Ray's vocals are completely screaming, he's like really going for it. And I thought that was a great album. I think it's one of his best albums. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, for me, who has back then, I've only heard one singer, other singer that's kind of reminded me of that. And so, this, this was new music to me, uh, the heaviness and, and that kind of high pitch vocals. So I thought, well, it was almost like uh, the Norwegian band TNT, which was a uh, huge inspiring for me uh, back in the day, back in the day. And I thought it was almost like heaven t uh, TNT, but almost like it's Metallica playing, uh, <laughs> playing the guitars or something. So it was, it was, it was a complete, completely new style for me. So. So when, uh, you, uh, sorry, when you listen, when you listen to this album, uh, the Entrance album, was this the only album that the band recorded, or do you do any more albums? No, uh, we did, did we did a, a demo and and uh, and the, the Entrance album, and, and we we uh, saved a few songs that we felt were our best songs for the next album, but next album didn't happen, so. So they, they actually recorded those songs, but they're just lying around doing nothing, basically. Yeah, and there are, there are uh, a few other songs that we recorded for the album that never made it to the album because it's one hour and <laughs> something I'd long. I'd love to hear them. I'd love to hear them. I, I guess there's lots of people that have this album that would like to hear those songs. Yeah, I don't know if we have uh, have the the tapes or anything. But 
But one uh, cool thing is back in the day, uh, there was this guy in Stavanger, even uh, it was called, that used to sell demos for us. And he was a huge uh, Metallica fan. And we were at it, his house and I think he had a like a, a big pile of Metallica albums all signed and everything. So he ended up being on the one and a half year with Metallica tour. Uh, when they filmed that stuff, yeah. so he brought the demos to to uh, to Headfield and uh, <laughs> the other guys. I don't know if they actually heard it, but it's pretty cool uh, to think of. I think Lars would be pretty pissed off because he's not as good at drumming. <laughs> oh, it was good back then. Oh, yeah, it definitely was. I agree with you. Back in the Lorraine Lightning Master Puppets days, great. Uh, one of our one of our m m most influential drummers for us back back uh, back in the day when he. Uh, he really played his heart out. Yeah, so the Manitou album, Entrance, what's your favourite songs from this album? Ake Falls, Dead Calm. Uh, no, no, uh, Autumn Leaves. Is that the Isn't that, no, is, is it? No, I, whoa, I oh, I still, still have trouble remembering the names. Isn't it Autumn Leaves? It's called, it's, it's, it's a moment. Have a look. We've third got, song. Uh, Servants of Greed, Ark Falls David, is it? Oh, Ark Falls Dead Calm. Uh, yeah. Autumn Leaves is the third song, yeah. Then yeah, that that's the one. That I like the um, I like the the rhythm, the drums. But the but the but that was. Uh, I always thought that it, that was so groovy the intro, and I liked the vocals, and I. I like the stops in the song, the, the, the pauses, the bridges, and yeah, I think that is uh, my, my favorite song. Is that the song that's got like a semi-ballad It starts off with the acoustic guitar? No. Uh, oh, no, that's... Um, is it the fall um, off? Um, the fall on? Is that the song? The fall, the fall on, yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah. Is that the... Great. Love it. Oh, thank you. Uh, and... Uh, well, that was quite special for us to do, and and we used we were we were we were in music schools. Me and the drummer, the bass player, and I were in a music school in 1991, and we learned learned a rhythm that was four, five over four, four, bum ba dum bum 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 ba dum bum ba dum, and that's what we used in the in the solo. Uh, solo parts there it was uh, uh taking inspiration for what we learned in music school it's very face worn in that song yeah well all, all the songs are so <laughs> i'm what, not hiding it so what did you break up then what was the reason for you after doing one album and calling it a day um well we started rehearsing for a new album and and uh, the drummer moved to to Oslo and uh, started in a few other bands and and I'm not saying we lost contact but was less and less contact and he called one day and said um, I'm leaving I'm I'm starting in this these other bands uh, so so we tried to we thought of thought of getting a new drummer but Per our original drummer he was so involved in the in the arrangement of the songs and and the uh, over overall sound of Manitou, so we thought that there, there's no way in, and no one can replace him. So, so we kind of just said enough is enough. Right then. So after that, did you move straight to Spiral Architect? Did you actually, did they actually form when you joined the band, or were they still were they going before you formed? You joined the band. They uh, they were uh, uh, we were recording uh, um was called a gathering of eight Norwegian progressive metal yeah, bands. Yeah, yeah, with the with Spiral Architect and and when we were in studio, I got the demo and I, it was the coolest thing I've ever heard. It was everything I wanted in a band because I was starting to get in more into uh, me and uh, Ambuli, uh, who is the guitarist in Terrorodium. Uh We were getting more and more into bands like uh, Watchtower and stuff like that. And and when we heard uh, Spall Architect the demo, we were just floored. 
So uh, I heard uh, the two songs on that demo. Um, and uh, when when that they heard that the uh, manager has to, has had uh, disbanded, uh, they called me or wrote to me. I, I can't remember, but then I just said, "Whoa, yeah, <laughs> hey, let's go." <laughs> I actually have that demo tape. I think your drummer is the guy sent me it, which I still yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. Original cassette. Yeah, really good. So yeah. you, could you could definitely hear Watchtower in this album. For those people that don't know, it's this album here. Didn't that? Yeah. Get did that not get re-released with a different cover, like a blue, a green cover at some point? No, uh, a red cover, but but uh, with one extra song, "Prelude to Ruin" by Fate's Warning, our cover, a cover song. It was a Japanese edition. They uh, we needed to have an extra song on on the album to get released in Jap Japan. So, so so we changed the cover too. Right, and so you joined the band when they actually formed. That their singer left, and you came in and took his place. No, they, they didn't have a singer. Okay. Uh, uh, Knossog, uh, who Leif Knossog, who sang on a demo, was uh, just a session. Or just he was a session singer. Right. Uh, so, um, and I, I don't think he wanted to join the band. Uh, so they called me, and um, and I remember one of the audition songs I had to sing was. Valley of the Dolls by Fate Spawning. That was a pretty high. Uh, <laughs> so that was uh, quite a quite a mission. And you succeeded, obviously, very well. Yeah, uh, and um, and they uh, the first song we ever did was on the first rehearsal when they played parts of uh, Cloud Constructor, and I. I said, can you hook me up with a microphone? I need to sing on this right now. And they um, they started playing the song again. And I and the vocal lines that I came up with at that rehearsal is pretty much the same that's on the album. Right. With the different lyrics, of course. But OK, so the album's called The Spectre's Universe. Who came up with that title for the album? I'm pretty sure it was Lars. Uh, the bass player. I think he uh, came up with a title. I'm not sure here. It could be Oscar too. So, uh, but I, I think it was Lars. But he uh, he wrote he wrote most of the lyrics uh, back then. Me and he, him and him and I. But Oscar wrote some lyrics and. Stay now. I think we all wrote wrote the song so just many years ago. <laughs> Sorry, um, so I'm I'm not quite sure who came up with it, but I'm I'm guessing it was uh, the bass player Lars. So, what was the influences on this song? Because obviously you can hear Psychotic Walls in there. You can also hear Watchtower. I mean, there's bands like Cynic and Death, and what other bands? Yeah. Came into Barrel Architect. Well, and Fate's Warning, and uh, and uh, more trash bands. We like, but also, uh, also uh, on the jazz fusion side, very uh, brand X and, uh, and weather report and fusion bands like that. We were very inspired by. Um, um, Hell spells. Uh, uh, there was a band with the drummer from Yes, I think, and Jeff Berlin on bass and Alan Holsworth on guitar. Can't remember the name now, but that was also a, a huge uh, inspiration for us back 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 uh, back then. How would you how would you describe the music for uh, Sparrow, Sparrow Architect to Manitou? Because it was a bit more intense, wasn't it? It's very hard going on the ears if you're not a musician. Yeah, Sparrow Architect is uh, ultra technical, I think, uh, and mix ultra technical metal mixed with jazz fusion. It's got the jazz bass. It got uh, the jazz rhythm, but but the metal guitars and vocals, uh, and and Manitou is progressive metal. It, it, it's it's riff based, also like Terrodium. It, it's based on based around the guitar. The, the guitars back then uh, we were inspired by in well, with bands like Metallica or King Diamond or. Fate's warning, and everything starts with the riffs. So, yeah. so that is Manitou. That's the difference, I think, progressive metal contra uh, 
jazz fusion mixed with the technical metal. I'd say that Oscar's drumming on the album kind of reminds me of Sean Reinhardt from Death of the Human Era. Ah, ah yeah. Great album and a, a fantastic drummer. Yeah, I think it's the best album that Death did, or one of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's all so good. <laughs> As I heard the Human album, it's like it was like a completely new band when you listen to Spiritual Healing or... Mm. The first album or the second album, it's just like a totally different band. It looked like Chuck had been really listening to a lot of Watchtower and bands like that, and he, he picked the best of the band's crew. And yeah, he just got a perfect lineup. Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, it was groundbreaking because mm, I don't think anybody I can remember anybody else that had done that that changed the whole band in with the best musicians he, he could find and let them set their put, footprints on on. Uh, on the music like that, it was uh, groundbreaking. And and uh, uh, another cool thing, uh, uh, which I like to brag about, is is that uh, when Death Dwell, if you if you heard them, it's Death without Chuck. Yes, um, it's did did Joe did Giorgio Gene Hoagland and and uh, yeah. Who's the singer? So they, Who's the singer in that band? Is it Chuck's nephew or something? I know. Um, Max Phelps uh, is he used to be in uh, Cynic uh, uh, sometime, and um, and when they played in uh, in Oslo, I got to up. Uh, I uh, had the opportunity to go up and sing uh, Painkiller with them. Oh, wow. So that was it was cool. <laughs> Singing Painkiller with Death. That's uh, yeah. That I remember cool. I remember meeting Chuck and Death backstage at Dynamo Festival in Holland. And Chuck said to me, check out the painkiller. He said, you want to hear me scream? And I was like, <laughs> okay, man, yeah, I'm going to check this out. And he did mm. a good job. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's a fantastic version. I, I never never knew he had uh, could do that kind of vocals. No, no, because he was moving away from the death metal. He was trying to get into the power metal thing with the Control Denied album. Mm, yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah. Did you know the original singer for Control Denied was supposed to have been? Do you, what? do you know the original singer was who, who's going to sing? The original singer for Control? No, I don't know. World in. Oh, shit. Yeah, that would have been fantastic. could do it for some reason. So, uh... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe Steve told me. I can't remember. It was we usually have a few beers. When... <laughs> I think Rialdo, Rialdo was also offered the audition as well. Oh, wow. That, yeah. would, that would have been really cool back in the day. Yeah, so getting back to the Sparrow Glark Attack album, then, which songs from this album do you do you like and why? Is there any particular favourite ones? Uh, well, I like Cloud Constructor because it's the first one we did. And and I have um, I wrote the 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 instrumental part in the end. And I actually played a keyboard solo there. So that is quite special for me. And I like Well, I like spinning too because they have thrown out spinning because they wasn't used to work with a singer and they just did instrumentals back in the day except for the ones with uh, with Leif Knausog on vocals. So I, I came in, came in and uh, and I heard the song and said, "You need this. We need to play this song. It's, it's fantastic. Oh, you can sing on that. Yeah, yeah. Let's try and." So that became spinning, and, and I love the that song, and, and I, I love all the songs. But an insect is it's a, it's our hit, if you can say it's most technical song, and that seemed to be the one people are reacting to. But but uh, but I think spinning and and cloud constructor means the most to me. Right. Okay. Because that that album was released on Serenity, Serenity Records, which is Ken Goldsmith's old label. How did you hook up with Ken? Uh, well, I can't. Oh, so many, so many years ago. But we were negotiating, negotiating with Mike Varney of, of Shrapnel Records. Oh, really? Who okay. discovered Ingvi and uh, Marty Friedman and all those. So that was kind of. So I can't really remember how Ken came into the picture, but. Um, but uh, I'm I'm not sure. It's so many years ago. 
but uh, but but Neil Kernan, our producer, he heard our demo in Indonesia, I think it was, really? on a record label he was visiting, and they played the song for him, and and he contacted us and asked, uh, "Hey, your music is really special. Uh, I would like to produce it or mix it." That was a special uh, cooperation too. Right. Because he was, because obviously it was sensory records. I mean, Ken also had a Zero Hour, another great band. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever, ever get a chance to tour with those guys? No, we never toured with with uh, with Spall Architect because uh, I, we never had a manager management. We never had a kind of budget for touring. We we had to book our own jobs and and um, and since we had no budget we have had no money for a sound for our own sound guy so we always used the house sound guy and um, not everybody was interested in in uh doing the best they could for us so i think our sound what we got out of that of course in, since we didn't have any money it didn't fit the band's music it was all muddy and even if we played really tight and we were really well rehearsed we, we we rehearsed eight hours a day back in the day and, uh, and uh, it just uh, didn't inspire us to 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 do more jobs right then so are you guys last time i spoke to you you said you were still still active as a band well well spall architect is not dead we we uh we chose to, we chose to take a, a break back in the day and we're still on that break. Twenty one years <laughs> but, later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, well, we have we have a lot of new material, and we um, and uh, we're all friends, and we're we're in the, in this band together, and uh, we talk from time to time, and and we are planning a new album, but uh, well, this little, people are have families now, and. And they have jobs and, and they have education and, and it, it's not that easy to go to put back a band that need to practice eight hours a day to to for months and months to do one of the the music to do the music we do so it's if not you, that uh, if you do a new album it's going to be a double album to make up for the lost time <laughs> yeah at least a double album <laughs> So, oh. let's move on and talk about your new band then, Terra Verdum. Great album. Anybody who hasn't heard, seen it or heard it, check it out. It's amazing. Best thing that I've heard in a long time. So just, oh, tell, me about, just tell me about this, because some of the band members are from Spiral Architect, yourself, and Burley, and Oscar, and then you've got Steve Diorgio from Testament on bass, mm -hmm. and you've also got an orchestra guy, John Pitt Phillips, is it? John Phipps. Um, yeah, John Phipps. You just tell me a little about, mm -hmm. about this guy, because I don't know who he is. Who's he, who's he oh, John Phipps. Well, uh, when uh, when we uh, were writing songs for this album, Bully and I, um, I thought that we agreed on making making it our dream album. What everything we wanted to do with our mu with music, we well, we're gonna do that. So I was uh, I was really inspired by uh, Roger. Uh, Roger Waters, the Amused to Death album, the way he has constructed that album with kind of like a movie, uh, you're into uh, this atm atmospheres and voices and s sound effects and everything. And I kind of wanted that. And and, and we wanted or orchestra like uh, Queen Strike had on the Warning album, that kind of thing. So I... I put out an ad on my uh, Facebook page, and people started started to um, reply. And uh, it was a Yasem uh, Yasem Darkwain of Divine Disorder from uh, Kuwait, who uh, who um, recommended John Phipps. He had worked with him on, on an album, and so I uh, I contacted him and uh, ended up uh, joining the band. And I think he's uh, I think he's a genius. Right. So who else has he worked with besides the band you just mentioned? He uh, well, NASA N A S A used his music for one of their videos, which is pretty cool. 
and uh and he has he has worked for uh moonspell uh angra uh dragon force uh oh a bunch of a uh, bunch of uh, amorphous bunch of bands he has uh, done a uh, uh, virtual or orchestration for okay so the, so which band members from uh, sparrow architect are in this new band oh it's it's oscar uh, and and, uh, and i right just you two guys and was bully mm. Manitou, Bully was uh, the guitarist, uh, one of the guitar players in Manitou, yes. Right, okay then. So how did you hook up with Steve? Because he's a really busy musician and he's got a lot of projects going on. Yeah, well, it was actually in Spoloctic, we're playing in uh, um, Atlanta in 2001, Prog Power USA, yeah. uh, together with uh, Symphony X and uh, Evergrey and... Uh, well, a bunch of other well, uh, a bunch of other bands, uh, really great bands, and uh, we met Steve there. Uh, I can't remember if I think he maybe wrote us before uh, we got there because he he liked the music and and he was attending the show, so, so we we met up with him and uh, we've been friends ever since and. Uh, uh, Oscar and and uh, Steve played together in Testament, and they played together in Scariot, which I also uh, I also uh, sang. Scariot, um, Momentum Shift, it's an album with all of us, uh, Steve, Oscar, and, and I. Um, and uh, when when we decided to form Terra Odium, we we thought of. Uh, since we were doing our dream album, I thought, um, I said to Bully that uh, I think the best we could do to our music is to have a fretless bass player, because that would sound unique with our kind of music. And I contact, contacted Steve and he said, uh, we love the music. So he said, yes, fortunately for, for us. That's excellent. So you said um, um, Oscar was in um, Testament. Did he, was yeah. He, was he just a touring drummer? Because I didn't see him playing on the album. No, nah, he played on played he played on the tour. Um, it was back when I I I used to sing in a band in Arcturus, and it was back then when he uh, he played with Testament. It was a it was a tour. Wow. So you said you had a band called Scarrot. Just tell me a little bit briefly about this band. Did you do an album? Scarrot. Uh, like Judas Iscariot, but without Judas is <laughs> just Iscariot. Uh, momentum shift. Yeah, it was um, uh, Daniel who has that band here. Um, they started out as with death growl vocals, and 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 then um, Odleif uh, from Munich. Uh, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Munich. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, he, he he sang there, uh, and um, and I did um, I, I did the last album, uh, and uh, he got Oscar on drums, and and they got in uh, Steve uh, for ba for the bass, so uh, so he play uh, Daniel plays the rhythm and um, and most of the solos I do uh, two solo lead guitar solos and Steina from St Sky, from Spall Architect does one solo there I think. So it was uh, back then. I didn't want to tour. I was really f finished with the music business, but but uh, I kind of got ins inspired to do that album, and and that what was get me back into the scene again. Because that album, I I found myself as a singer on that album. It was the first album that I really could use uh, multiple tracks, vocal tracks, and really experiment in a in a private studio so uh, it's a uh, very important album for me right then so the the name terror audio who came up with the name and what does it mean uh oscar uh, mickelson that our drama came up with the name it was really meant for a more brutal band because it means translated from latin it, it's earth's earth hate uh but i thought well that fits well with our music because I 
interpreted as Earth's hate, it's Earth's anger. It's the it's the storms. It's the it's the winters. It's the, the coldness. It's the tsunamis. It's everything, and I think that fits into. Uh, I don't think it's too brutal. I think it fits in with a progressive metal band. Yeah, because you're changing all the time, different tempos and. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's aggressive. Sometimes it's calm. Sometimes it's chaos, and yeah. Did you say that this name, when I spoke to you, you said this name was a uh, Latin, something in Latin, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, we we use Latin in, uh, well, it's Ne Plus Ultra is also Latin, our album title, and, and I kind of, well, Latin, it's, what I, I like about it, it it's mystic. Is that mist? It, it add mystique to, to everything, and 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 you got to do some. Well, most people don't know Latin, so they need to Google or do some work to understand uh, what it means, and that's educational. And that I think that is a little bit cool. And I like that you need to do some work to understand what it means. And sometimes the meaning is not what you thought it was at all. And so uh, so yeah, so we. Use Latin. The name is Latin, and uh, and the album title is is Latin. So, what does the title in Latin mean to you? What's it? What's it actually mean for people that don't know? Uh, well, I think the actual meaning is "ne plus ultra," uh, no no more beyond, or something like that. It was written uh, is Greek mythology written on the pillars. Uh, of what is it? Hercules or something like the boats no one should pass the pillars or something like that but but it it means the ultimate the absolute best the, the absolute best right and did you have and, any, uh, what did you have any other titles for this album if we did you have any other titles for the album? oh, oh no uh, if you had no not for that album not for this album i i when i uh, no i came up with that title uh, long time ago and i and i thought that this is this is because of this is our dream album I, we wanted to be in Neplus ultra we wanted to be the best we could do and and it's not meant in an arrogant way it's meant like this is the best we we this is how we wanted to to be right then so the band's name did you have any other names for this band or was this just the name that you came up with uh, that, that, was, that, that was very difficult find a name for the band and and i think we uh, i think we uh, well months and months and months we <laughs> we discussed names so we had i'm pretty sure we had a few hundred names but uh terry odium was the one that really that everybody could say okay yes i like it right so the album cover terry odium cover kind of looks like something off the hellraiser horror films with the labyrinth yeah just tell me a little bit about the cover well, it's a it's a it's a photo illustration from Marcin Sasha uh, from Krakow, um, and it, I think it just it just is progressive metal. <laughs> the whole everything is is progressive metal, and it, and there can be so much multiple meanings to it. Uh, but that man entering entering the the, the mace uh it's just it is progressive metal i think it's it really portrays what style of music this is it's very dark so it kind of reminds me a bit like that full maze runner as well yeah yeah too and uh, yeah hell uh, meets maze runner all in one cover yeah and i think that also fits because our album is well it's meant to to symbolize uh, the, the style we're playing, you know, the pro with all the uh, key changes and and, uh, and everything, uh, the, the progressive music, but also it it's dark and it it shows kind of what the mood of the album is. It's, for me, the album is pretty dark and sometimes very cold, and uh, that was our intention to to. Uh, that the listeners should feel uh, the atmosphere changing from songs to songs. Yeah, so how do you see this album as a progression from Manitou and Spiral Architects? How do you see this music changing? Oh, well, 
I think it may be a more um, uh, not intellectual, but but it, it, I think it's managed to taken a little bit further. I mean, we were young back when back when when we did manage and I think this is the grown up manager. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying that we're no better than the, the old manager. That's not what I mean. But it, it's, I mean, we've grown older and we have different ideas and um, and now we have different people coming in and setting their po- footprints on the album. So, um, so I think that is uh, the best I can c- come up with now. But uh, in, regarding Spiral Architect, I think it's I think, uh, well, I think it's a mix between Manitou and Spoil Architect, really. Yeah, I do. I think, I think it's a little bit more relaxing, a bit more easy going on the ear, whereas Spiral Architect was a lot happening in one album. This is a bit more yeah. back, but still mm. in one album. <clears throat> we wanted, <clears throat> we really were hungry and really wanted to to do something new on, on a Spiral Architect to, to, to change, uh, not... Uh, uh, not to try to do th- things no one else was doing and and uh, manager we tried to do things that fits warning and uh, the other bands metallic and those bands were doing so so it's a mix now it's we try to do we try to well try we we, we wanted to be special we want to do uh, i think what i mean oh mumbling uh, what i mean is is now uh, um Gent and and progressive metal. It's very percussion now. The guitars are da, da, ba, da, ba, ba, ba. It's, uh, and that is cool. Uh, but we wanted to to go back to the old days, uh, back in the day. Face Warning, Metallica, uh, King Diamond, uh, Ozzy Osbourne, the, the riffing, that kind of music, and that we wanted to do old school progressive metal. So yeah, I've noticed. So, so, this album, there's a little bit of Nevermore in there as well. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. So this album was produced by yourself and Bolly. How did how did the how long did it take to produce this album? What sort of period? Ah, oh, well, it took it took a year or year and a half uh, because uh, we never we have never produced an album before. Uh, uh, Bully has his own studio and has uh, he has. Uh, has done other albums, but but this we wanted this to be the sound to be really good. And uh, since none of us are pro mixers uh, or producers, that was kind of challenging. Challenging, uh, but we uh, we studied and we tried and failed for months, and uh, so uh, it was a hard, very hard job. But I, I th- but I'm very satisfied. With, uh, with the results. Was it done through lockdown or before lockdown? When did it actually? Oh, before. Yeah, yeah. And you had, you had it finished before lockdown started. You just had to wait for to get a record deal, basically. No, uh, when when the lockdown started, I think we were still negotiating with, with uh, Frontiers, the album. Uh, I think we were still uh, negotiating that. That took a half a year, too. So <laughs> negotiating with an album deal. It's good that you sound with Frontier Records because Frontier Records seem to have a lot of AOR melodic metal bands. Some pop yeah. metal, but you're the first progressive metal band that they've signed. And I really think that they need to start signing more bands like you. Just branch out a little bit. You could be the opening for more progressive bands. Well, I think uh, Cir- Circus Maximus was signed there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's fantastic that... Uh, that there are, they are uh, getting us the chance to, to be on a, a big, uh, big um, record label like like that. It's it's, it's strange to be colleagues with Def Leppard and uh, Toto and Journey and uh, White Snake, and it's uh, surreal. But uh, I like that because they have so good uh, distribution and and everything. So that 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 is. Um, it's uh, exciting for us to to be a to be a progressive metal band band. Uh, 
with all of those other AOR and, and power metal bands. So what other labels did you approach besides Frontiers? Because there must have been some progressive labels, like, like Inside Out Records you could have tried. Or... Oh, yeah, yeah. We were negotiating with, uh, well, more than, more than, more than one. Uh, but uh, Frontiers were the ones that stuck all the way. And uh, so uh, but we, there were a lot of other other uh, album uh, labels too. All right then, so can you just tell me briefly about the songs for those people that don't know, Crawling, what's that one about? Uh, well, Crawling is, um, uh, it is uh, based on a verse we had in Manitou, a song in Manitou uh, that was never released. And I said to Bully, I, I love this verse. Can can we do this song? And he's well, he rewrote the whole thing and it ended up and as crawling. And I wrote the lyrics. Um, and the lyrics are uh, I'm not a fan of of um, telling what I think the what I mean with the lyrics because I, I think it's like a book. If you read the book, you make up your own mind. And when you see the film, the film is usually a not that good as as what you have imagined, so I don't want to ruin that for. Uh, but but um, well, yeah. Uh, the lyrics are mainly about life, death, the earth, and everything in between. Okay, then. So, do you have any favorite songs of the, on this album? Do what's one of your favorites? Uh, what well, they are. I like winter because it's 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 calm versus going into uh, chaos. But um, my my favorite is it was not death. I think it that because I think uh, we did something really special there. Uh, okay then. So have you done how many videos have you actually done for those people that don't know? I know you've done a lyrical video. Have you done any more? No, we did a we did a official video uh, when when Testament was in uh, Norway and uh, Steve had time to to come here and uh, so we did a, play, a, a official video where we were playing um, and uh, the rest of the uh, we done two official songs but it's more like it's more like um, official uh, just uh, the album cover or picture of us it's it's not uh, it's not a real video per se. Okay then, so how well is this album selling? Because it's only just come out a couple of weeks ago, hasn't it? Yeah, I don't I don't have no clue uh, about album sales, but but the reviews are fantastic and uh, it's amazing. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, and uh, it seems like Frontiers US is sold out. Uh, it was from the first day and uh, then the album they shipped a new ship, uh, shipment and uh, was open a few hours before before they they were sold out again. So I, I really don't know how it sells, but uh, probably uh, more than I thought or hope dared hope for. But I mean, it's 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 twenty twenty one albums doesn't sell anymore. <laughs> I hope the review I did you was a good one. I give it five out of five if you saw the review. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw the review. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. Great album. Uh, one of my favorite albums of this year and this year i haven't seen a great lot of good albums there's been some fairly good ones you know it's not been the greatest year but a lot of bands have probably been pissed off and probably don't want to record because of lockdown so you've done well to get this out uh, oh yeah yeah it's, it seemed to be a really good time to get out uh, our album but it's been a few years but uh, uh so uh i'm excited to especially now to to, to rehearse for a for, for live uh, live shows, it seems like now people really are hungry. Uh, two years before the lockdown, uh, everybody seems to be tired of shows and uh, oh yeah, maybe I'll see them, maybe I'm not. And now the the smallest band sell out in 15 seconds. So, <laughs> sure. how are you, the big question is how are you going to compete to make this the, the next album better than this? <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I uh, well. Uh, we've been working with this album for for so long, and we've been waiting. We uh, the other musicians in our band are very busy uh, musicians and touring, and Steve been 
toured uh, touring with Testament and Death to All, and so, so we had a, we have a, had a lot of time to write new songs. And Bully, a uh, guitar player, main main writer, is is very very productive. So we have, uh, I think we have songs for almost two or three albums more. Wow, and how do, you, how do you think it's going to differ the next album from the first one? Is it going to be similar style? I think it's going to be be similar uh, because all the songs are written in a period of maybe five six years, but um, you never know when um, when uh, the other musicians put their footprint on it. it. It changes, but I think it's I think it's um, probably I don't I don't know if we're going to change much. No, I think you've got the perfect chemistry. I don't think you really need to change much. Well, thank you. Well, well, you see, you mean you, I mean you've seen the bands like I don't know, uh, say Fate's Warning from Awaken the Garden to No Exit to Perfect Symmetry. That's pretty drastic changes. Yeah, true. Uh, I like all those albums, but um, not not all bands are that lucky when they change uh, styles. So, so I have no, uh, I have no need to change any style. This is the music uh, I love to play and love to sing. So. Uh, so I hope uh, hope the next album will will be as good as this. It's kind of getting the perfect balance right with the music. Yeah, it is. It is, and I I like the sound and um, and we're experimenting with uh, maybe faster songs or slower songs, but it it's it's uh, we'll see where we where we. Uh, where we are when the, when the next album is due. So when the next album comes out, Steve has to play with a fretless bass or he's not doing the album. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope he's playing on fretless uh, <laughs> bass because that, uh, that is the sound we and he, he usually plays on a fretless. So. Yeah, it must be hard playing a fretless bass and finding out where the notes are because they've got no, they've got no scale, no, no fretboard. It's just... No, but, but he was, he was playing, uh, he was, uh, um, this, uh, uh, what is it called? Double bass. Uh, double bass, yeah. He was playing that when he was in, in high school or, or school, and he just transferred that into his bass. So he's, he's pretty, uh, for, he, for he, him, it was natural. But uh, for uh, uh, if you played fretted bass all your life and s- suddenly start using a fretless, it's a whole new. Uh, New world. So, when do you think you'll be touring? Do you think there'll be any touring for you guys? Maybe the end of this year, if you can get Steve involved, or are you, you going to wait till next year when everything's calmer in the world? Hopefully, time will tell. Uh, I'm uh, I'm eager to to out to go out there and uh, uh, playing some shows and uh, and um, I, 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 time will tell if if Steve will join us live. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's pretty busy with Testament and Death, but we don't, maybe there's a chance. So I hope, you, uh, hope, but, uh, or, or else we, we need to just to, uh, to find, uh, to put together a live band. All right. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank you all a bit for doing this interview. I wish you all the best. Um, do you have anything to say to the people I'll be watching this interview? Yeah, thank you so much for watching and thank you for, for the interview. And uh, and I hope you check out Netflix Ultra um, and we would love to come and uh, play this album live for you. Okay, well, have a nice evening. Be safe and keep in touch. Thank you so much, Liz. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.